So hello, my name is Joanna Wesotska, also known as Joanna Wyselka. And uh, my lab is interested in gene expression regulation in the context of stem cells and development. And we want to understand how complex forms and function arise in developmental process from a single set of instructions encoded by our genome. And we think that chromatin plays a central role in this process through integrating information. And we're trying to understand how the regulatory information encoded by the DNA is read in the context of cellular history and signaling environment to produce chromatin states that are either permissive or restrictive for gene expression. And to study the mechanisms of gene regulation in the context of development, we are using several or several models which recapitulate specific developmental cell phase transitions and focus on cell types of unusual developmental plasticity, such as embryonic stem cells and the neural crest cells, both of which can acquire many different alternative developmental phase. And we're also complementing this mechanistic studies with organismal models and in vivo work in xenopus chicken, zebrafish, and the mouse. We're using embryonic stem cells to explore developmental functions of the non-coding parts of our genome. So we're very much interested in junk DNA, except that in our view, one cell type's junk DNA is another cell type's treasure, and our genome is extremely dynamically utilized during development. And particularly dynamically utilized elements are so-called enhancer elements, and I'll spend next few uh, minutes talking about enhancers. So what are enhancers? These are compact, specialized DNA regions which enhance expression of target genes that can do so at a distance, are direction independent, and function as binding sites for multiple transcription factors representing both lineage uh, specific transcription factors and signaling effectors or transcription factors that are at the end of signaling pathways. Although transcription factor combinations that bind the enhancers are extremely cell type specific, turns out that enhancers share certain chromatin features, such as presence of uh, general coactivators and chromatin remodelers, uh, uniquely modified nucleosomes and nucleosome depleted regions at the center of enhancer which allow transcription factors to access the DNA. And we can use these chromatin features to annotate enhancers in a genome-wide and cell type specific way. So the idea here is that when enhancer is active, for example here the forebrain enhancer will be active, it will have the presence of particular chromatin characteristics specifically over the forebrain enhancers, but not enhancer active in the lead. We can do such genome-wide annotations through genomic technologies, uh, for example, CHIP-seq analysis, which in this example here was done in human embryonic stem cells, where we can fragment chromatin, pull down specific fragments using antibodies uh, to histone modifications, transcription factors, and coactivators, isolate underlying DNA and sequence it via high throughput sequencing and then align sequence reads and count over which portion of the genome we have the most sequence read and, and therefore it would suggest the presence of particular features and as a combination presence of enhancers. So what are we learning from this type of genome-wide analysis? Well, for example, in, in one of the recent studies from my lab, uh, Alvaro Rada Iglesias, a postdoc in the lab, done genome-wide analysis of enhancer landscapes in human embryonic stem cells and discovered that early developmental enhancers are, in fact, epigenetically primed for activation in embryonic stem cells. And uh, we hypothesize that these poised enhancers contribute to embryonic stem cell pluripotency by anticipating future developmental states. Indeed, poised enhancers can transition to active enhancer states in response to the signaling cues during differentiation. Several projects in my lab are focused on understanding cellular plasticity. For example, what makes embryonic stem cells pluripotent? Uh, projects uh, 
we're focusing on are how is the embryonic stem cell fate protected from differentiation? How do signaling pathways connect to the pluripotency machinery? And how can potential developmental fates be anticipated at the chromatin level? Another big interest in the lab uh, has to do with uh, cranial neural crest cells. So neural crest cells are these uh, really fascinating uh, cells which arise during the developmental process at the border of the neural plate and epidermis. And when neural tube closes, these cells delaminate, emigrate, and turn into highly invasive stem cells. They can differentiate to over 100 different cell types, uh, including not only neurons and, neurons and glia of peripheral uh, nervous system, but also they form pigment cells and mesenchymal progenitors, which continue to differentiate to form cranial bones, cartilage and connective tissue of the head and face. So most of our facial features is in fact a product of the neural crest cells. And because these unusual properties of neural crest cells, we're using them to st as a model to study cellular plasticity, cell migration, disease, evolution and variation. But how do we study a cell type that arises at three to five weeks of gestation and is extremely transient and migratory? A couple of years ago, my lab had developed a method in which we can derive migratory mi multipotent neural crest cells in vitro using human embryonic stem cells. And these in vitro derived cells recapitulate uh, gene expression profiles characteristic of early neural crest. They migrate when implanted to chicken embryo, assuming correct positional identi identities, and they retain plasticity of the neural crest. They retain the neurogenic mesenchymal and melanocytic uh, differentiation potential. So now we have a model to study and understand how perturbations in neural crest development uh, lead to the disease. And indeed, neural crest is highly relevant for human disease. Uh, there are over 500 Mendelian disorders that are associated with craniofacial malformations. Neural crest is implicated with a, in a large number of syndromes and also non-syndromic craniofacial malformations such as cleft lip and palate. Interestingly, a large subset of these syndromes is associated uh, with mutations in proteins that associate with enhancers. For example, transcription factors and chromatin remodelers that bind at enhancer elements. And uh, two graduate students uh, in the lab are using human neural crest models to investigate enhancosome perturbations that may underlie human neurocostopathies and craniofacial malformations in humans. Now, because we can derive a large number of these cells, we can also start thinking about performing large-scale analysis, uh, such as previously mentioned CHIP-seq analysis to investigate transcription factor and chromatin landscape of the human neural crest. And when we perform such genome-wide enhancer annotation from human neural crest cells, we discovered thousands of putative neural crest enhancers. And what was really interesting that in terms of their functional annotation, they were associated with genes involved in craniofacial development and more so uh, development of a very specific bones and structures in the face that are derived from the crest, such as upper and lower jaw, palate, nose, cranial base, etc., etc. So that made us think about these elements being relevant for or providing a blueprint for early craniofacial development in humans. And because a lot of variation is regulated on the gene expression level, we are starting now to explore face as an example of individual variation. And we're starting to think about how to link genetic variation in regulatory elements with phenotypic variation in craniofacial features. And perhaps more fundamentally, we're also interested what makes our faces human? How are our regulatory elements uh, in the crest or other cell types different uh, from that of a chimpanzee? 
and people in my lab are also developing a chimpanzee stem cell model to ask these questions experimentally. And with this, I would like to end and thank my group and uh, all the people who are doing great work in my lab. <laughs>